Welcome to our latest Benina webinar. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favourite feet, the Benina free motion couching foot, which is foot number 43. Uh, this foot is used to sew down cords or wool that are too thick to go into the needle or the bobbin and it creates wonderful bold designs very quickly and it's really great fun to use. Uh, this foot will fit on any Benina from the very old to the most update and you can even use it on a Q-series machine, one of our uh, long arm machines. But today we're going to look at two different ways of using the foot. The first way is using, a free, using it as a free motion foot to create a colourful design customising a child's hoodie. Uh, this is a great way to jazz up a top to personalise it for a child or a grandchild. And as winter's on its way, it's a nice way to keep them warm with something really special. The second technique we're going to look at is using the Benina version 8 software to create a more controlled design, which we can stitch out using an embroidery compatible, mach compatible machine such as the 790 Plus. Uh, so the 790 Plus is the machine we're going to do the computerized section on later. Uh, the cord that you use in this project needs to completely fill the hole in the foot and be around 2 mm. Uh, I find just cheap polyester wool to be the best option. Um, it's, it comes in loads of great colours and, um, and it works really well on the jersey. I've chosen this lovely pink hoodie which I'm going to embroider my design on. Well, to be honest, my daughter Ruby chose it. She loves pink. so. Um, Hoodies are a good choice because they're a normally a, quite a nice firm fabric and also when you're sewing on the back you can just open them up and then they can lay flat so they're, they're a good option as opposed to say just a normal sweatshirt. Um, the first stage is to work out where you're going to put your design and it's important to work out where the hood falls so you can either get um, the child to try it on and just mark out where the hood falls or if you put it on a hanger you can see roughly how low the, the hood is going to go so I've just marked that spot there. The next thing is to design um, the design for the back. Now I've just chosen a simple floral design with my daughter's name running across the middle. It does need to be quite simple because you are using quite you know quite a thick cord so um, yeah, the simpler the design is, the better. So once you've worked out what you're going to um, what you're going to embroider, then you just need to cut it out, pin it onto the back, and then you can use this as a template to roughly mark out what you're going to um, what you're going to sew. But it only needs to be rough because it's free motion, and you can you can alter it as you go. So I'm just going to cut this out so I've got a bit more of a guide placement guide. So I've roughly cut out my template because I'm just going to use it as a rough guide and I've got it central uh, on my top making sure it's not too high for where the hood's going to fall and now I'm just going to just mark a few of the points. So I know roughly where I want to go. And, and now I can draw it out using my invisible marker. Now, with invisible markers, it's really important that you check that they do become invisible uh, and that they do wash out. So it's always best to do a little test run on a piece that you can't see before you start. And then I'm just going to try and roughly match it on this side. Doesn't have to be exact. And then we've got the design roughly marked out. Now we're ready to go over to the sewing machine, put the attachment on and get threaded up. Okay, so this is foot 43. Um, it has a tunnel which you uh, feed the thread through and then it goes down through the bottom of the foot and that guides the thread. 
but it also has another guide um, which just keeps the thread out of the way. Uh, the kit comes with two different guides, so this guide is for the 3 and 5 series, then the larger guide is for the 7 series, and I'll show you how to fit that when we move on to the 790 later, so I'm just going to put that to one side. To attach the guide for the, um, for the 3 or 5 series, what you do is you remove the thread cutter, like this, so this just pulls out, it can be a bit stiff sometimes, so you just pull that out, then you get the little guide and you just slide it on and it just hangs there like a little hanger. And then you can pop that back into the machine and it will just hang there and you can just keep that on there. You don't need to take that off once you're finished because it won't do any damage. It can just stay there. So the next stage is to thread your machine. Now your top thread needs to match the colour of the wool or cord you're going to use. And then I've used um, just a plain white thread in my bobbin because um, I'm going to be changing colours a lot on the top and I don't want to have to keep changing my bobbin, so that's just going to stay white. This foot is a free motion foot um, and it has the free motion spring to help you move around your fabric. So that means that we need to lower our feed dogs. So I'm going to lower my feed dogs. And I'm also going to just select just a standard straight stitch. So the next thing is to get your wool and pass it through the guide. Now I find when I'm using this, it's good to unravel quite a lot before you start because you don't really want any tension on your wool. You don't want to have to be pulling that ball round to unwind it. So I'd unwind quite a bit. Then the thread just goes through the guide like that. So once you've passed the thread through the guide on the side, you then need to pop it through the tunnel. And the foot comes with a, a handy threader, so you just take your threader and pop it through. And then you can pass the thread through the guide, and then you can just pull it through. And then it, the thread needs to go down under the foot, so we put the guide up through the bottom. Again, pass the thread through, give it a little pull, Ooh. and then pull it down. And then you can take your guide away. And there you've got the thread going through the side and then down through the bottom. Then we're ready to attach it onto the machine. We can just pop it back onto the machine there. And now we're ready to start to sew. Now, um, I haven't put any stabiliser behind my, sweat, um, my sweatshirt, my hoodie, because it's quite thick and I don't think I need it. But if you felt that what you were sewing on was a bit thinner, you might want to put some stabiliser behind it to give your fabric a bit more body. Um, one of the most important things I found about using this foot is just to make sure that you've got all your threads under the foot before you start and your bobbin thread is up as well. This really helps because you can hold all your threads when you start and you don't get into any tangles. So one way you can do this is you can uh, lower your foot, either using your lever or your um, knee lift, and then we can just do needle down, needle up, and then I can bring it up. And then just using my um, quick unpick, I'm just gonna pull all my threads through So I've got everything underneath before I start. And I can put my, put my foot down now. Also, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set needle down, because when I stop, I want my needle to stop down in the work so nothing slides off and I can have a rest and have a thing where I want to go without worrying things are going to move. So I've set needle down. Now, I'm going to start off by doing the centre of the flower. When I start a line of, um, of couching, I'm going to do, well, I, I think about five stitches on the spot just to anchor everything down so I can then just trim my threads and it won't become undone. So I'm going to do five stitches on the spot and then I'm just going to start moving around. Now you need to keep a fairly even speed and the real secret I find is just to make sure that your wool doesn't get too tight. It needs to be able to flow 
nice and freely. If it gets tight, it pulls to the side of the foot, then the stitches um, miss the wool and it doesn't anchor it down so well. But if you keep the wool nice and loose, you should find it couches over beautifully in it and it just follows wherever you, wherever you guide it to. It's a really lovely foot. So now I'm going to work my way around the design and I'm going to change my thread colour to coordinate with my wool as I go along. So I'm going to carry on with my yellow on the other side now. I've got my needle down set um, and because I now need to take my needle out to move on to the next side, what I can do is I can use the really handy toe tap on the foot control and that's raised my needle and I can now raise my foot and what I can do is I can just trim my ends. So I'm going to do five stitches to secure at the beginning and then just work my way around the design. I've changed my colour now, I'm going to move on to the lighter blue. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about where the wool goes. Um, I've got the wool behind my machine, the ball's just resting on the table, but I've made sure I've unravelled quite a lot, so I'm not getting any tension on it when I'm sewing. So, I mean, you could put the ball in a little bowl or something if you want. And again, at the start, I'm going to go needle down, needle up, and then I can lift up and just make sure all my threads, including my bobbin thread, are underneath the foot and out the way. And again, I'm going to do five stitches on the spot and then I'm going to um, start to sew my flower. One other little tip that I have found useful is um, to make sure that the arms of your hoodie are up and back because that, that kind of stretches the fabric out, keeps it nice and flat um, and you don't get so much bunching. So um, the arms going backwards is a useful tip. And then again, I'm just going to hold my threads and start to sew. So I'm going to do a few stitches on the spot. And then I'm going to start to move. So you just need to keep it nice and even and keep reasonable tension on your fabric. And just have a bit of fun with your design. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just roughly following the design that I've drawn out. Now when I get to this point, I'm going to stop and because I've set needle down, nothing's going to move and I'm just going to move my tails out of the way so I don't sew over them. And now I can just start to sew again and finish off this flower. And then I'm going to do a few stitches on the spot and then use my toe tap to raise my needle and then I can trim and now I'm going to move on and do the other side in this colour and now we're going to do the darker blue, the outer flower. When you're changing direction sharply, sometimes it's a good idea just to do a couple of stitches on the spot just to anchor that section down before you, you change direction. Now we'll move on and do the other side. And now we're going to do the leaves. And I'm just going to go up to the centre and out, and back again, and up and out again and then finish with a few stitches at the end. So this is the last section and I'm just going to embroider the name, my daughter's name Ruby, so doing this in a, a light purple.
get my tails out of the way. going to end with a little swirl at the bottom. So this is my design finished. All I need to do now is just um, get some water and get rid of any of the little marks that are still left from the water soluble marker and take it home and try it on my daughter and see if she likes it. For well, the next section we're going to create um, a design that's going to go uh, on the top of a cushion and I'm going to use the brilliant uh, version 8 software to do this. So the version 8 software allows you to design um, couching stitches using foot 43 which uh, creates a much more controlled way of using the foot because you're using it in conjunction with the embroidery unit. So you can create really quite complicated precise designs uh, using the software. So this opens a lot of exciting options. I mean, I'm creating this for um, a cushion cover, but I have done it where I've used it, um, say, to embellish a skirt or a dress to make a nice border to go all the way around the bottom. Um, so it's really a, a, an interesting way of using the tool. Um, so I've opened up my version 8 software, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my hoop up. So I'm going to go up to my uh, show hoop and settings icon and I'm going to left click and this allows me to select a hoop. Now I'm going to be uh, using the Benina 7 Series 790 so I can select the Benina 7 Series machine. I'm going to be using the largest hoop that I can on that machine which is the Maxi Hoop and most importantly I need to tell the software that I'm going to be using foot 43. That's because foot 43, as you've seen when I've used it earlier, is quite a wide foot. So I need a wide border around the edge of my hoop so it doesn't bump into the side of the hoop. So it's really important I tell it what foot I'm going to use, foot 43. Then I can click on OK. And I'm also going to click on Show Hoop. And then I'm going to go... So I've just OK'd that. and then I'm going to zoom in so I can see my hoop. And I should be able to go up here to, to hoop. So now I've got my hoop on the screen. Now I'm going to use some of the built-in designs on the, uh, that come with the software to create my design for my cushion. So first of all I'm going to go into in insert embroidery and I'm going to look in the Benina 8 embroidery file and in arts and crafts. And I want to use this design here, which is uh, BD837-48. So I'm going to just click on that. Now this is a quilting design, and it's just a simple running stitch. I'm just going to press F2 on my keyboard so we can see that nice and, uh, nice and large. Now, as I say, this is just a normal running stitch, but I want to change this to couching. And to do that, all I need to do is just click on it so it's selected and it will go pink and you'll see the sizing handles around the edge and then I can come down here and choose couching so this is the icon for couching so I just need to left click and there it's turned it into couching for me and you can see it's thickened up that line so that's the first stage now to create my design I now want to rotate this 45 degrees so I go up to my icon up here and to rotate right to 45 degrees and now I've got it on my on the side and I'm just going to zoom out so we can see that. In fact, I'm going to go back up here and go back to hoop. Now I want to add some corners to this design. So I'm going to go back into insert embroidery and I'm going to choose this design, which is BD827-48. I'm going to click on that and open. I'm just going to move this to the side and I want to rotate this. Now 
I've worked out that I want to rotate this by 135 degrees. So I'm going to go up here to my rotate icon and I'm just going to type in 135 and press enter and that's rotated it 135 degrees. Now I want um, to have all the corners filled in so while it's selected I can go into mirror merge and I can select mirror merge horizontal and vertical click on that and now I've got four and I can just arrange those so they work nicely in the corner and press enter now I'm going to press F2 so we've got that nice and big now what I want to do is I want to convert those so they're all going to be couched because at the moment they're just a running stitch so I can select one corner and while holding control I can just work my way around so I've got them all highlighted then I'm going to go into uh, arrange in my toolbox I'm going to scroll up Oh, and I'm going to click group that just flashed quickly so I've grouped it now so now when I click on one they're all grouped now what I want to do is make sure that my central design is truly central to the outer parts of the design so I'm going to click um, I'm going to click select all and in the arrange toolbox I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on align centers so now I know that my central design is exactly in the middle of my corners. The next thing I need to do is to change my corners from a running stitch to a couching. So I'm just going to select those and press couching. So now everything is all going to be couched. But I want to change my corners to a different colour because I'm going to do the inner section uh, one colour and the outer section another colour. So I'm just select the outer section again. and I'm just going to change it to a pink so it's we've got a color change there and we can see that in the color film there <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is I want to make it bigger so I want to make it as big as I can get it in my hoop um, uh, so I, and I want to stretch it because um, I want to make it a bit longer but I can't really make it any wider because it's as wide as it will go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and then I'm going to use my sizing handles and I'm just going to drag it all up and I'm just going to make it a tiny bit thinner so it fits in the hoop better okay so I'm happy with my design now and it's going to fit inside the hoop allowing for the width of the foot which is what this line is showing here it's showing me that I've got enough room to fit foot 43 in and now that I'm happy with that design I can now export it to my USB key so I'm going to go up here so it says write to card a machine and I can click on that there it will open my device selection and I'm going to save it as an EXP file because all of the modern Beninas all work off EXP files. So that's extracting the data it needs from the art file and um, sending that to my uh, USB key as an EXP file. So I can just click on that and it's saved it to my key and now I can move on to stitching it out. So I've created my design on the computer using the version 8 software and now I need to stitch it out. And I'm going to stitch it out on a 790 plus. So I've made my uh, cushion top, I've pieced that together. So I've just used two shorter sections and two longer sections and this is designed for a 14 inch pillow. And now I'm going to take my template which I printed out from my design and I'm going to place it in the centre and I'm just going to mark out uh, two marks in the bottom corner so I know the, the exact positioning of my design because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the brilliant pinpoint placement feature of the 790 to make sure it stitches out straight so I don't have to be too worried about hooping up because even if I hoop up a little bit um, unevenly when I come to stitch it out it will stitch it out straight but I just need two markers to make sure that that's going to line up. So they're my two markers uh, there. 
and now I'm going to hoop it up. So I'm just going to take the middle section and line it up roughly. And then take that over and pop that in the hoop. And then just need to tighten that up and then just give it a little pull to make sure that that's nice and tight because it wants to be drum tight for when I pop it onto the machine. So I've tightened it up a little bit. I might just give it another couple more clicks. And now I'm ready to pop it onto the machine. So I've got my embroidery unit set up. I've, uh, I've attached that and I've got my USB key plugged in. Now I'm going to actually attach the guide, uh, the larger guide for the 7 series so I can pass my cord through it when I'm using my foot 43. So this, set, this fits at the back of the machine here and we're just going to pop that in and clip it up. And that's it attached. And now I can feed my cord through the hole uh, at the bottom. So the cord's going to go through the little loop and then through the foot as we have done previously. So I've got my little guide again and I can go through the side and I can pull that through and then I'm going to go through the bottom. I hope you can see that. And that's going to go down through the bottom. Now I've used a coordinating thread again on the top and I'm going to use white thread on the bottom, uh, white bobbin thread, so I don't need to change that. Okay, so now I need to put my hoop on. Let's just slide that under. Just pinch and drop that down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my design. So I'm going to go up to my USB key and choose, choose my design there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pinpoint placement to, um, to line up my design so it fits perfectly. So I'm going to go into information and select pinpoint. And that's just brought my, the arm of my um, embroidery unit forwards. And now I can attach my hoop and I can just pinch and drop. So now that's attached. And this has brought up my pinpoint placement screen. So what I want to do is I want to use the grid. So I select the grid and I marked out the bottom two corners. These are the corners I'm going to use. So I'm going to select my bottom corner and it's jumped to where it thinks it is uh, but that's a little bit out, that's, so what I'm going to do is then move it over a little bit and up a little bit until I get that point just right. Just gonna go. So I'm happy with that, that's on the first marker. Now I bring my needle up and I press set and then I want to swing over to the next one so I'm just going to tap here and it's going to go roughly where it thinks that should be and that's pretty good I'm just going to go up a tiny little bit and just check yeah and I'm happy with that now so that will have um, sorted out any discrepancies in my hooping up and it should now fit perfectly in the middle and I'm going to press set there. So I've got my two points set, I'm happy with that and now I can come back out, close that down and go into stitch out. Now as with um, using the, uh, this foot on, on the other machines, I need to go in and I need to tell it what foot I'm using. So I need to tell it that I'm using 
uh, foot 43. And I also need to tell it that I've got my straight stitch plate on. And once I've got those two things lined up, I should be able to start to sew. Now what I want to do is bring my threads, I'm gonna bring my bottom thread up and my top threads underneath my foot like as I did before. And to do that, I'm gonna use needle down, needle up. So it's gonna do needle down, needle up. And it automatically raises the foot for me, which is a nice little feature. And then I can just give it a little tug and then got both my threads to the top. So now I can lower my foot and I'm just going to keep it on a medium speed. I wouldn't recommend doing it too fast and now I can start to sew. Let's jump to the beginning. Now it's asking me to trim. I'm just going to raise my foot up. And I can just trim away the excess that I don't need because it's done some stitches at the start to anchor that down. And now green tick and I can start to sew. So as with before, you just need to make sure that you're not getting any tension on that wool and it's flowing nice and freely. And then you can sit back and watch it stitch out. So we've completed our first colour and the machine stopped and allowed me to re-thread and I've changed my top thread colour to match my wool and we're now going to stitch out the section uh, with the darker blue. So I've brought my threads to the top and now I can lower my foot and start to sew. And now it's going to let me raise my foot and just trim off the excess and off we go. So that's my design finished. Uh, now all I need to do is take it off the machine and uh, I'm going to turn this into a cushion. Once you've finished couching uh, down your wool and you've finished your top panel, you can then make it into a cushion. And uh, I've simply made a pillow back on this cushion, but you could put a zip in it if you wanted to or put some buttons in to hold it together. But I think it looks really effective. I'm really pleased with the way uh, the colours have worked and I think the cord creates a lovely strong bold design. Now you don't have to just use this on home decoration projects, you can use it on clothes as well. I've bought this dress, uh, just a simple red dress and I thought it could do with um, a little bit of embellishment. So I used the couching, for, uh, couching foot to create this really lovely bold design across the bottom and I used the pinpoint placement to get, to get it just right and that also helped when I was joining the two sections at the back. So there's lots of fun uses for this foot. I think it's a really, really great foot and uh, it just creates really nice bold designs quickly. Today we are going to do a little bit of couching with foot number 43. Now I need a fairly fuzzy yarn because I want to be able to catch it all and it's easier to load the foot before we change it with the existing free motion foot that's on the machine already. So let's just take that one off. Click. And put this one on. Just like that. Okay, so I have um, chosen quite a few stitches, 15 in fact, because I want lots of little stitches to try to catch my fuzzy yarn. So uh, it's 
reasonably thick, but not so thick that it won't actually go through the slot like that. Okay. Right, so we're going to move over to a space. So I've got a tail coming out this end, and I've got this end here just loose. This is not attached to anything. I've got my left hand handle pushed right up out of the way because I actually really like to quilt one handed, and I'll be able to use my left hand to guide the cord. Right, let's move this to a space. Okay, so I'm going to bring my bottom thread up. I'm just using a glide thread here for this. And I'll do a couple of tie-off stitches just to secure it like this. And then, hopefully, everything will go according to plan. <laughs> 